We all live in a digital world. We all need it to be open and safe. We all want to trust and to be trusted. We all despise control and desire freedom. We, we are all united. united. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Poland. Welcome to Katowice. This is the opening ceremony of 16th annual UN Internet Governance Forum, an international meeting held at the initiative of the United Nations, enabling a global discussion on the development of the Internet. My name is Agata Konarska. I'm a TV journalist, and believe me, it's a great pleasure for me to welcome you all, dear participants, at this most important and international event of the year. I warmly welcome all those gathered here in this hospitable interiors of the International Conference Center in Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, please let me welcome United Nations Under Secretary General, Mr. Liu Zhen Min. Please take your seat, please take your seat. Just a welcome. <laughs> Prime Minister of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki. <laughs> During opening ceremony, we will also get to hear from United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, and the President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Andrzej Duda. We also welcome all participants who are online with us. After all, ladies and gentlemen, it is an event about the digital world. The headline of uh, this year's UN Internet Governance Forum is United Internet, which means an accessible, united, friendly internet for all. The internet connecting all its users into one community responsible for its shape and functioning. During the COVID-19 crisis, the internet proved to be enormously helpful in organizing our lives to an extent that we could have never foreseen just a few months ago. This has only confirmed how precious and valuable a part of our lives it actually is. We are simply, ladies and gentlemen, living in a digital world, and it is a fact. For the first time in history, Poland is hosting the global edition of the Internet Governance Forum, organized here in Katowice, the International Congress Center. And we Poles are very honored to host such an important event. And we consider it as an appreciation of our efforts and activities in the field of digitalization. We hope and we believe that the forum will be a place of open and real debate about the future of internet because everyone can influence this debate and express their opinion. During the five days of this year's edition of the forum, there will be 300 events, activities, and initiatives, such as lectures, debates, and workshops devoted to the digital world, from legislation through currently available technologies to future technologies such as quantum technologies. Experts from all over the world, ministers of digitalization, entrepreneurs, and representatives of the world of science are taking part in the IGF 2021. They will also discuss more general horizontal issues, such as those related to the access to the Internet. Because we have to remember that at the moment, half of the world still does not have such an access. During the IGF 2021, important decisions about the future of the Internet will be made of editing all web users, and there are more and more of them. In just two years, from 2019, 782 million new users have used the Internet. That's more than twice the population of the United States. The global pandemic has definitely accelerated the process of digitalization of individual areas of economic, political, and social life. Of course, it still requires areas of economic, political, and social life. Of course, it still requires appropriate funding and the involvement of the younger generation. The organizers of IGF 2021 are aware that 
young internet users play a key role in the development of the internet. After all, the future belongs to them. Therefore, an important part of this year's Internet Governance Forum is the Youth IGF Summit. This year's edition of IGF is being held in a hybrid formula, so anyone interested can in person in Katowice or join us online. It's worth, ladies and gentlemen, being with us. And it's time now to officially begin. The first speaker will be Mr. Liu Zhenmin, United Nations Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs, who are now invited to the stage with very big pleasure. Mr. Zenmin will take the floor, give us a short introduction before the Secretary General's speech. Please, come on stage. Your Excellency, Mr. Duda, President Poland, Your Excellency, Mr. Morawiecki, Prime Minister of Poland, Your Excellency, Mr. Krupa, Mayor for Kodowice, Honorable Ministers, Excellencies, distinguished participants, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the United Nations Secretary General, Mr. Antonio Guterres, I warmly welcome you all to the official opening of the 16th Internet Governance Forum convened in Kodowice. Due to the Scheduling conflict, Secretary General Guterres is not able to join us today in person, but we have the honor to hear his address delivered from the UN headquarters in New York. Now, please play the video for Secretary General Antonio Guterres' remarks. The COVID-19 pandemic has highlighted the life-changing power of the internet. Digital technology has saved lives by enabling millions of people to work, study, and socialize safely online. But the pandemic has also magnified the digital divide and the dark side of technology, the lightning fast spread of misinformation, the manipulation of people's behavior, and more. We can only address these challenges united through strengthened cooperation, by establishing clear rules to safeguard human rights and fundamental freedoms, by regaining control over our data, by countering disinformation and hate speech, and by connecting everyone to the Internet by 2030. The Internet Governance Forum has a crucial role in shaping the conversation. The vision of an open, free and secure digital future underpins my roadmap for digital cooperation. And my recent report on our common agenda proposes a global digital compact aimed at bringing governments, the private sector and civil society together in support of this vision. I hope this forum will create momentum and spur progress. I urge you to be bold and I wish you successful deliberations. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Secretary General. Dear participants, I join Secretary General Antonio Guterres in extending our heartfelt thanks to our host, the government of the Republic of Poland. I thank uh, President uh, Duda for his previous quality speeches going to be delivered. I also thank Prime Minister Morawiecki for his personal participation here today at this opening. The 16th IGF theme, Internet United, is timelier than ever as we continue to witness how the COVID-19 pandemic disrupts our lives of human beings. The pandemic has impacted how we live how we work and how we interact with each other and how those unconnected are left further behind. The IGF could deliver its promise for shaping a digital future for the world, turning the COVID-19 crisis into opportunities. Indeed, this is easier said than done as the global internet governance is complex, but united, we can succeed together. So, distinguished participants, join us at this hybrid meeting, outside, on-site and online. As of last night, there are over 
8,000 registered participants representing governments, international and intergovernment inter organizations, civil societies, academia, technical communities, and businesses. All the participants engaged in over 200 different sessions focused on the forum's main areas. From access and activity to social economic development, human tr rights, trust and cooperation, to environment and emerging regulations. I believe there will be insightful exchanges highlighting the promises and the perils of the digital space, showcasing solutions and approaches and inspiring ways forward to our digital future. And the way forward should reach those who can make a concrete impact. The United Nations remains fully committed to working for a better internet for all through a strong IGF process. I look forward to being part of many important exchanges at the court of East IGF. I wish this 16th Internet Governance Forum in Katowice a great success. I thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Liu Zenmin, Under Secretary General for Economic and Social Affairs. Thank you for your speech and thank you for being in person with us in Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, it's now time to give the floor to the President of Poland. Mr. Andrzej Duda will now deliver his opening remarks in the form of video message. Distinguished, distinguished guests, dear attendees of the 16th UN Internet Governance Forum, it's my great pleasure and true honor to welcome you at IGF 2021 in a beautiful and vibrant Polish city of Katowice. Regretfully, I'm unable to join you personally today. However, it's with great satisfaction that I can greet you, the most reputable internet community, send you my best wishes and to address you by means of this video. Your numerous presence here on the site in Katowice, but also online due to the current pandemic situation, only shows the significance of the digital space in present days and how important its issues are for us all. Let's be honest. If there was no internet, we would not be able to meet in such a big numbers these days. It's true that we all live in a digital world. Yet we also live in a time of great challenges which affects this digital dimension of human activity. Therefore, we all seek an environment which can be secure, neutral and trusted. It's only up to us, the global community, how we design it and how we organize it. Digital transformation is simply a must for our global well-being. But we still need to answer some crucial questions, such as how does digitalization change our lives? How can we fully benefit from it globally? What is our vision for future education? Can we fully trust the emerging technologies? And how can we harvest its benefits? Or how do we preserve human rights in a digital space? These questions need to be answered in a collective manner, not just by a country, by a region, or by a group of stakeholders. What we really need is a joint concert effort, otherwise it will simply not work. Dear participants, I'm truly delighted that today Poland is at the heart of the debate on these vital problems. Some of you have made a long journey to come here to Central Europe, a region of unique energy, home to ambitious nations, as well as hardworking, talented and creative individuals. I have no doubt you will appreciate the character of this amazing region extending from the Baltic 
in the north to the Black and Adriatic Seas in the south. I'm especially happy to see such a great response from younger generations of Internet users. Your voice is so important in the process to be discussed in Katowice over the next seven days. The future is yours, and so is this debate. Talking about future, I simply cannot miss this opportunity to mention that this year we celebrate the 100th birthday anniversary of Stanisław Lem, a visionary writer and futurologist. Lem once said, we don't want to conquer the cosmos. We simply want to extend the boundaries of Earth to the frontiers of the cosmos. But does the Internet really have no boundaries? And if so, can we extend them beyond the boundaries of our habits? Is the global network the final frontier? I'm sure those questions will be an inherent part of your dialogue, especially that the main theme of this year's UNIGF in Poland is Internet United, Free, Open and Indivisible. I wish you undisturbed intellectual work, fruitful and passionate discussions as well as brave conclusions. May your debate result in making the Internet a valuable and enriching space as well as secure, inclusive and trusted dimension of human activity. Good luck. It was the President of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Andrzej Duda. Ladies and gentlemen, today the Prime Minister of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki, is with us in Katowice and will take the floor now. Please. Panie i Panowie, drogi Panie Ladies and gentlemen, and the Secretary General of the United Nations, ministers, members of parliament, distinguished guests. The virtual world and the real world have started to become intertwined, first in literature, then in real life. And today, we can see both of these worlds merge. We can see this in our everyday lives, in our economy, in the social media, and in public administration, as well as in interpersonal relations. This means that today we all belong to a global internet community, which can trigger further development in future, but which can also become a trap and a threat. It's just like a knife, which you can use to cut a slice of bread, but which you can also use to hurt somebody. And the Internet is also a double-edged sword, something that can impact the lives of every single person living in the world. The Internet is a wonderful promise of a better life in future. It promises a life within a global network of connections. We can, for example, see that in healthcare, in the, in the healthcare system. This edition is organized one year after the previous edition, which was canceled due to the pandemic situation, which makes us realize 
the threats related to the pandemic. But we have also seen technology save many lives in Poland, for example, where we have implemented electronic healthcare solutions to help the population. We have also experienced cyber security attacks organized by states which use the internet as a weapon. So today it is of the utmost importance to work together during this IGF summit to develop joint internet governance solutions. If you don't pay for a product, you yourself become a product. And I think this phrase really represents the condition of the individual at the time of the development of the internet and the social media. If you don't pay for a product, you yourself become a product. And we need to realize that the internet can be a powerful weapon. We need to realize that Today, it is extremely important to develop the right solutions under the auspices of the UN and other international organizations. It is a challenge. It is the greatest challenge of the 21st century, a challenge which we, we must face all together through joint efforts. One hundred years ago, the first monopolies were created and nation states coped with that by appointing antitrust organizations. But today we are facing global challenges and we must resolve those challenges. Also the challenges related to the internet. We need to develop global solutions related to the internet. This is one of the greatest challenge faced by humanity. It is one of the greatest challenges faced by the UN. The UN was established after the Second World War to make the world a better place, to protect peace and stability in the 20th century. But I think today the UN will face up to the challenges of the 21st century as well. And one of those greatest challenges of the 21st century is to develop best practices and obligations to be fulfilled by all states as regards the management of the internet, which is a wonderful tool, but one that carries a lot of risks and threats as well. And I am convinced that this summit organized here in Katowice will contribute to the creation of new solutions. I am convinced that it will help in the implementation of new solutions in countries across the globe. Thank you very much. I'd like to thank the organizers of this event. I'd like to thank the Under Secretary General of the United Nations, who is here with us today. And I'd like to thank all of the distinguished participants. I'd like to wish you fruitful debates, and I hope that you develop specific solutions that will benefit all of humanity. Thank you. Thank you very much. The Prime Minister of the Republic of Poland, Mr. Mateusz Morawiecki, thank you for his speech. And in this moment, ladies and gentlemen, I have to emphasize that uh, the Chancellor of the Prime Minister is the co-organizer of the IGF 2021. Thank you very much. And as we are in Katowice, let's give the floor to the mayor of the city, Mr. Marcin Krupa, who will deliver his opening remarks. You are now invited to listen and to watch his speech. Szanowni Państwo, drodzy goście, kilkanaście lat temu nasze miasto. Ladies and gentlemen, 
Dear guests, several years ago, our study took the first steps towards transformation. At that time, we focused on innovation and creativity, also creativity of the local residents. Without them, the transformation would not have been possible. That was an incentive that turned Katowice into a center of modern technologies and business meetings and a city of great events. The International Congress Center in which we are hosting you today is one of the most remarkable effects of that transformation. It is a great honor for me to welcome you to the World Internet Governance Forum. It is for the first time that Poland is hosting this prestigious event. I am very proud that this is a yet another event organized under the auspices of the United Nations. It all started back in 2018 with the COP24 Climate Summit, and now we are meeting at the IGF. Forum. And next year, we will be hosting the participants of the World Urban Forum. This shows how important Katowice has become on the world map. I can only cordially invite you to a joint discussion on the future of the Internet in Katowice. Let this meeting be a fruitful place for the exchange of ideas and experiences in the field of Internet management. Welcome to Katowice. Mr. Marcin Krupa, city mayor of Katowice, Katowice, a town who became a center of a global debate about the development of the internet. Ladies and gentlemen, now it's time for the opening statements from representatives of stakeholder groups. I know that Doreen Bogdan Martin, director of the Telecommunication Development Bureau ITU, is with us online. Good morning, hello, greetings from Katowice. You are now invited to take the floor. Thank you so much. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, excellencies, ladies and gentlemen. It gives me great pleasure to join you for the opening of this 2021 edition of the IGF, representing ITU Secretary General Hu Lin Zhao, who was not able to be with us today. This year's meeting in Katowice has a particularly special meaning for me because of my Polish heritage. It's also special for all of us at ITU because this year marks the 100th anniversary of Poland's ITU membership. Let me take a moment to thank the government of Poland for its many valuable contributions to our work over so many years and for its continued active engagement in our mission to connect the world. This year's IGF challenges all of us to think about the internet as one community. Internet United is much more than just a theme. It's an urgent call to action to bring meaningful connectivity to all. Our new data released by ITU last week show that internet uptake dramatically accelerated during the pandemic. We had what we call a COVID boost with almost 800 million users coming online since 2019. That's encouraging news, but it's still very far from good enough because our figures also indicate that 2.9 billion people or 37% of the world's population remain totally shut out of the online world. With December passing quickly, we're nearing the dawn of a new year. Okay, right. I believe song. that year may be the most critical in generations in terms of our efforts to bridge the digital divide. In January, the UN community will come together in Doha, Qatar for the LDC5 conference. And in a few short months that follow, ITU will hold its World Telecommunications Standardization Assembly, its World Telecommunications Development Conference, and its 2022 Plenipotentiary Conference. For the ITU, the lessons of the pandemic present us with an unmissable opportunity an opportunity to push connectivity to the very top 
of the global development agenda and to leverage a holistic approach to collaboration to shape a new world where a fast, safe, and affordable internet connection is not a given, is a given, pardon me, it's not a privilege. So where a fast, safe, and affordable internet connection is a given. Ladies and gentlemen, ITU has been a staunch supporter of the IGF since its inception at the World Summit on the Information Society, for which we served, of course, as a lead agency. As we look ahead to the shape of a future IGF+, Plus, as foreseen in the UN Secretary General's high-level panel report on digital cooperation, ITU will work hard to further strengthen this partnership to drive broader participation and accelerate progress towards the Sustainable Development Goals. I hope many of you will join us for our forthcoming World Telecommunication ICT Policy Forum, where we will meet to discuss how to better harness emerging technologies to drive sustainable development. I wish you a very successful IGF 2021, and I look forward to working alongside you to build an equitable, sustainable, and inclusive digital future for all. Thank you very much. Doreen Bogdan Martin, thank you very much for your opening statement. Mr. Ralph Mupita, President and CEO of the MTN Group, is with us online also. Hello, good morning. Greetings from Katowice. Do you hear us? Great to see you. Good morning, I can hear you loud and clear. The floor is yours then. No, thank you so much and uh, a very good uh, afternoon, morning and uh, evening, depending on your timeline. Um, I am dialing in from Johannesburg, South Africa. Uh, and just to wish all the attendees to uh, this uh, very auspicious forum um, and uh, the matters that are being discussed within the context uh, of internet and internet freedoms. Um, maybe just to start with some perspective of uh, MTN Group and uh, the role that we've seen uh, ourselves and other operators playing to enable more and more people to connect to the internet and remain digitally included. You know, we serve uh, close on to uh, 270 million subscribers across 20 markets, largely on the African continent, uh, but we also serve uh, markets in the Middle East. In Africa, we are serving uh, about 17 African countries where we have operations there, generally number one or number two across these markets in uh, the size and scale of our business and uh, the customers that we cover. And uh, in terms of uh, internet connectivity to these customers, you know, over time. And I think for many, it will be um, interesting to uh, remind them that uh, um, there are many uh, markets where people are still not um, enjoying the benefits of the internet and uh, what it can do to transform societies. Um, and we have uh, actually, you know, smartphone penetration as a proxy for internet connectivity at best about 40%. So 60% of uh, those subscribers that we're dealing with are actually not enjoying the, the benefits of the internet. But what we've seen in the context of the COVID-19 pandemic, um, as uh, the pandemic um, um, you know, started to transform lives and livelihoods from March last year, has been uh, a clear divide about those who have and those who don't have. Those who have and don't have access to the internet. We saw um, in March last year into the, the first couple of waves across markets that for those who had access to the internet, they were able to carry on. Uh, they were able to continue their normal economic activities um, and more broader social activities. We saw uh, kids were able to go to school online for those who were privileged, but for those who weren't privileged to have access to the internet and the tools that are needed for continuing education, you know, they were stranded. And in some of our countries, um, children have, this, the countries we operate in, some, some children have not gone to school since March last year. So you, we're having a generation of children who would have been left behind at best, but obvious, or at worst, um, you know, their education has been completely disrupted. Um, and there were other evidence and uh, examples of this impact of showing the very stark divide between those who have and, and, and those who don't have. 
we've seen a significant surge um, in, for those who have in terms of data usage um, across and in some markets, you know, our data traffic is uh, about 170% up from the same period, um, you know, two years ago, which shows that um, there's a lot more um, interaction and engagement uh, in the internet across uh, pretty much the, the markets that we operate in, as I said, predominantly in Africa. We've taken a view as a company that one of the things that we need to build as a core to our strategy has to be around accelerating uh, broadband coverage um, you know, over the next two to three years so that in pretty much all our markets, we can have people covered by at least 3G technology um, at the 90% level. Um, and we believe that that will, um, even the, the countries that have the most challenged environments uh, should be able to get to that level of uh, coverage so that we can ultimately get to the universal coverage, you know, well before the, the, um, the, the UN goals of 2030. So we want to be able to accelerate that. And we will have to work um, not only in kind of traditional modes, but also we'll need to think about, um, you know, working with satellite companies and uh, alternative technologies to be able to reach that last mile where people would uh, otherwise not have access. So we believe quite fundamentally that the, the, the need for uh, universal coverage um, is fast becoming a human right. Um, it is provided largely by the private sector, but policy frameworks and in incentives to continue the investment uh, into providing more access, you know, we will need these to be provided also by governments and stakeholders more broadly. We fundamentally believe that um, we need to maintain the internet freedoms. So we do believe in an open internet. We want information to flow and we want the internet to remain safe. Um, those three things for us are pretty sacrosanct. The so-called internet freedoms need to be maintained. And we also do want to call out um, you know, the ITU and uh, um, you know, structures more broadly uh, to support the operators as they operate in environments where these internet, uh, internet freedoms may get challenged from time to time by governments. We've ex um, experienced that in several of our markets and we're not in a position as an operator um, you know, to, you know, to operate outside of license conditions as well as outside of the legal and regulatory frameworks of countries. But the need to protect internet freedoms, to enable commerce, uh, to, to enable people to continue being educated, access to health, um, and, and so forth, we believe that these things are very, very important for the socioeconomic development um, of markets more generally. But I speak you know, with the hat of Africa in particular, so that we can see the socioeconomic progress um, the, um, fully realized uh, in the potential that Africa has uh, in particular. So with those comments, I just want to wish all of you well and uh, wish that you have a very successful conference and for the IGF uh, continued success going into the future. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you for your interesting remarks. And I'll have a great pleasure uh, in inviting to the stage uh, Ms. Kosi Wavi, Anna Akpau Kamasa, who is with us in Katowice. Welcome to the stage. And the floor is yours, of course. Thank you, moderator. Hello, everyone. It is a pleasure for me to be here. My name is Kosiwavi Anna Akbao Kamasan. Um, I am a student at University of Lomé in Togo. I represent the IGF youth and my community. My subject is the perspective of young, of young people and their position in internet governance sphere. I'm so grateful for this opportunity and at the meantime, there, is, there are millions of youth like me who does not have this opportunity. I would like, in the future, the program will extend. What I learned from the pandemic, the internet becomes a human right and social issue. 
to the economic lack of education and poverty. I would like to see the government and the UN collaborate as mentioned on the, SD, on the SGJ 17. It will be a duty for me as the IDF youth representative to, to spread program and benefits of the program to a youth people. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much. Now, ladies and gentlemen, Miriam Kühne, chair of the RIPE community, would like to say a few words to all the participants of the IGF 2021 in Katowice. Miriam, do you hear us? Hello, good morning. Okay. Hello, Miriam? Yes, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you, everyone ah, can hear you. Perfect, thank okay. you. It's your time Thank now. Thank you very much. Great. Thanks for the introduction. Dear Excellencies, colleagues and friends, there in Katowice. Yeah, my name is Miriam Kühne and I'm the chair of the RIPE community. I'm speaking here today on behalf of the um, Internet Technical Community. RIPE stands for Réseau IP Européen, which is the technical coordination group of network operators in Europe and beyond. Thank you very much for inviting me here to speak and during the opening session of IGF 2021. And I especially want to commend the organizers in Poland for all their efforts to make this event a success despite all the difficult and, and unpredictable circumstances leading up to the event. And I also want to recognize the importance of our collective efforts to innovate and to come together in these online and hybrid events using the technology made available by the internet. And this also made internet governance more inclusive than ever, I believe. Our society's response to COVID-19 has illustrated just how central the internet is to our lives today. It's the internet that's kept us connected during this pandemic. And it's amazing that despite the additional load, the internet has for the most part kept running undisturbed. And this was possible to a large extent thanks to the collaboration and coordination of the technical community, and especially those who operate and maintain the internet's underlying infrastructure. I was really impressed to see how operators helped each other, especially in the beginning of the pandemic, when many of us had to be in quarantine or in lockdown and couldn't go to work or to the data centers. And network operators have shared contact information and, and asked if they can help each other. Um, you know, while going to a data center, maybe they could help um, another operator while they were there. And, and don't forget, many of these operators are actually competitors. But, but they do know that the internet would not work without um, such collaboration. And then that they, and ultimately all of us, um, benefit from it. Sharing knowledge and information, learning from each other and helping each other out is an integral part of the technical community and is one of the reasons the internet exists in the first place. The RIPE community, for instance, is over 30 years old. And even though um, it's mostly deals with the technical aspects of the internet, um, it's pretty diverse and it's open to anybody. You could say it's multi-stakeholder avant la lettre. Of course, we all understand that the success of the internet and its importance to our daily lives brings with it new responsibilities. Not only do we need to build out and maintain the internet's technical infrastructure, we must also ensure that as we extend access to more people in our societies, we also protect users online and ensure their security and privacy. Public policy has an important role to play in addressing these concerns and public policymakers in legislature and regulatory authorities around the world are urgently looking to develop and deploy policy solutions. And if anything, this sense of urgency has only increased in the last two years. But well-meaning policies, like any other powerful tool, can have unintended consequences, which could increase risks elsewhere or impact the operation of the internet's underlying technical infrastructure that I've just described to you. And this is why the IGF continues to be such an important venue 
bringing together people with different expertise in an open dialogue. The internet is so broad and diverse that none of us can understand every aspect of its operations. We need to learn from each other, examine what works, what doesn't work. We need to understand each other's concerns and value, it, value each other's expertise. And just like the network operators in the RIPE community coordinate to ensure that we can all connect, we need to foster collaboration and cooperation on all levels and between all stakeholders. And as the IGF itself evolves to meet the needs of a changing internet governance space, we need to keep that open, inclusive, transparent and multi-stakeholder approach that has made the IGF such a unique example of how to manage governance at a global scale. The value and benefits we all get from the internet are deeply rooted in its being an open, single, stable network of networks. It's global in nature and accessible to all. And we need to work together to ensure that it stays that way. Thank you very much for your attention and I wish us all a productive and insightful discussion in the days ahead. Miriam Kuniter of the RIPE community, thank you very much for your inspiring comments. Ladies and gentlemen, I have a pleasure now inviting to the stage Republic of Poland Plenipotentiary for UN IGF 2021, Mr. Krzysztof Schubert. Welcome to the stage, the floor is yours. Excellencio, Panie Premierze, Państwo Ministrowie, Your Excellency, Mr. Prime Minister, distinguished guests, I have a great pleasure to be hosting you here personally in the city of Katowice that has undergone a transformation that is becoming a modern city oriented on innovation. I have the pleasure of summarizing the first day, day zero of this year's IGF. Day zero was filled with interesting debates that uh, gathered a very diverse uh, community interested in the development of the digital world. This is a multi-stakeholder community, ladies and gentlemen, and this is what the United Nations um, holds very close to their heart. Four and a half thousand of participants registered online. 800,000 of participants registered in total, representing so many different countries and different continents. This is what we all wished for. And irrespectively of the difficulties, irrespectively of the fact that last year's edition had to be canceled, we have um, uh, managed to organize this event. Polish participants uh, were active last year uh, during the online digital summit, and I think that was duly observed. Let me summarize it in a few words. What happened yesterday? We talked about the infrastructure, about access to modern 5G, 6G infrastructure, but we also talked about access to the internet in general. The second area that was uh, discussed yesterday was related to the digital services, digital services offered by the world of administration as well as by the world of business. The last two years of the COVID-19 pandemic have shown it to us how important digital services are to us. Without them, we wouldn't be able to work, we wouldn't be able to study, we wouldn't be able to make purchases online. And so we all had to um, go through a very steep learning curve, and I think we've uh, tapped into the potential of those past uh, years. The third area that was discussed yesterday was the competences of the digital world. The more we live in the digital world, the more we are affected by a number of concerns related to the digital world. The fourth area that was discussed yesterday was cybersecurity. Cybersecurity as seen from the perspective of enterprises, citizens, and members of the administration. 
There were two uh, more sessions uh, held yesterday dedicated to the need of international cooperation, multi-stakeholder cooperation involving the representatives of business, the representatives of the world of academia, as well as the representatives of government agencies. We also discussed cooperation in the digital area, including uh, different countries. There were ministers representing different countries who talked about the different forms of collaboration, both at the European level within the V4 group, with, but, but also um, at, a, at a broader uh, international uh, level. We also discussed investment. We discussed supporting digital development. Without investment, without the necessary outlays, this is not going to be possible. We all realize it. And so we talked about supporting SMEs as well as startups. We talked about developing emerging uh, companies in the realm of digital services. A new component that was proposed uh, by Poland this year is uh, the Youth Summit. And so senior specialists are going to confront the younger generation who will continue managing the internet in the future. And that has met with a lot of interest. We were not quite sure what the response would be, but the auditorium was full yesterday and a lot of interesting talks were held during the youth summit. So this is what happened yesterday. And in the evening, we attended a beautiful concert at the Polish National Radio Symphony uh, Orchestra Concert Hall. That was a truly beautiful evening. And there are four more days ahead of us, four more days of high-level meetings, different sessions, and multiple interesting events. I would like to thank the representatives of the United Nations for conferring that right to us to be the host of the 16th edition of the Internet Governance Forum, its 16th edition. We no longer discuss governing the Internet solely, but we discuss the new regulations as well, the forthcoming technologies, quantum technologies, high-performance computing technologies, all that is part of the debate that is held during this edition of the forum. I would like to encourage you to participate in the discussions during the forum. Please be active. You can comment on whatever is happening here using the hashtag IGF2021. Thank you very much for your presence here. Thank you very much, Krzysztof Schubert. Thank you very much for making a short summary of the first day of IGF 2021. And in this way, ladies and gentlemen, the official part of the opening ceremony is nearing its end, but we still have for you a cultural show. In a moment, a great artist will perform especially for you. They are guests, they are participants of the IGF 2021 in Katowice. He's a classical pianist, composer, conductor, as well as entrepreneur and public speaker. He started playing piano at the age of 14, but a few months later, he won his first piano competition. At the age of 18, he played at the Théâtre de Champs-Élysées in Paris. His breakthrough came 2010 at the most important piano competition in the world, Chopin Piano Competition in Warsaw, where he won more prizes than anyone else that year. He has performed in the most prestigious halls in Europe, Asia, and both Americas. Recently, together with his wife, they founded Apasio and Apasimo, a music and art education startup used by universities. He appears also as a speaker representing the music world. He has spoken and participated in the discussion at the World Economic Forum in Davos and also in San Diego during the world's largest educational conference and, of course, a lot of other places. Passion is a key word in his life. Today, he is with us in Katowice and played three pieces by famous Polish composers. Wojciech Kilar, theme of the film Trendowata Precz Moich Oczu, Ignacy Jan Paderewski, Menuje Dzidur, Opus 14, number one, and Frédéric Chopin, 
Polonaise Asdor, Opus 53. Additionally, he will speak about the importance of quality music and the music education for all of us in a world full of technology and artificial intelligence. Please give a big applause to Ingolf Wunder. Ingolf Wunder.
Thank you so much. Thank you very much. It's my huge pleasure to be here today in Poland at the IGF and to talk to such a great international crowd of people who all deeply care about digital transformation. Thank you so much for having me. Today I would like to talk to you about the importance of music, quality music and music education in a world full of AI. We are surrounded by technology and we definitely live in a world of overstimulation. The smartphone became our best companion and with the current crazy times we live through, we get even more connected to computers. I'm a musician, as you heard, but my wife and I, we also have an internet startup. I love technology and on that journey so far, we got to know the up and down sides of technology and got to know how they can influence our human evolution. However, our tech consumption habits might change in the future. It's quite safe to assume that we go into a world where most segments of our lives will be controlled to some degree by an AI. And through these AI systems, we'll be continuously being bombarded uh, by audio, video, content 24 seven and in record speeds. And it's very important to know that all these streams of content that come into our brain are immediately evaluated with the two minds within us. We have the conscious mind and we have the subconscious mind. The conscious one runs on a computer equivalent speed of about 40 to 100 bits per second, which is quite decent already. But our subconscious mind runs on a mind blowing 40 to 100 million bits per second. So while your conscious brain can only focus on a few things at the same time, your subconscious mind takes in everything. So in fact, everything you have ever experienced, thought or listened to stays to some degree in your brain. And in those streams of content, there's almost always also some music present. Music and sounds is something we simply cannot get away from. Even if you cover your ears, you still hear the sounds. But before we go deeper into the relationship of music and tech, it's important to answer this basic question. Why is music and sounds, why is that so important for us humans and for our bodies? Why is it relevant? Well, firstly, we process sounds the quickest. Therefore, they shoot a pistol at the start of a 100 meter race and they don't flash you in the face with a light. Secondly, music seems to have a very direct influence on our human nervous systems. Music makes us sad, music makes us happy, music makes us think and music makes us focus. Music seems to have all these direct influences on our body. But why does music do this? Well, this is because of frequency. 
music is obviously frequency. But if you zoom in on a quantum level, all of the trillions of our, of our cells are frequency too. They're waves. And if you scientifically analyze that, you see that all the information we receive has a direct biological impact on our bodies. The science around this is called epigenetics. And it tells us that what some call your personal reality, so what you thought, what you eat, what you think, <laughs> this is thought, and of course what you, what you listen to, has a direct influence on how our DNA blueprint is being used in order to make proteins. And these proteins make up the cells, and the cells in the group are what we call us. And here's the thing, billions of cells die every day and are replaced by newly created ones. And these new ones have been directly altered by your personal reality. And when I first learned about this, it, it blew my mind, almost literally. <laughs> so it means that it's scientifically proven that what you listen to changes you biologically. And as a musician who became conscious of these things, I can tell you firsthand that the influence of music on our bodies and brains is absolutely profound. And what I can also tell you is that the more quality music has, the more good change it's doing within us. I'll come to this in a bit, but quality in music means it gives our body more information, more diversification, more emotional details, more shades, and so on. And all of this happens to all of us every day, no matter if you're, if you're aware of it or no matter if you're a musician or not. So I'm asking you, if you know what you know now, that it's scientifically proven that music changes our bodies and that quality music does it better, why would you feed yourself with low quality music exactly? Low quality music means that it has less diversification, less meaning, less details and shades. In fact, low quality music can be directly compared to junk food. And unless you're a seven year old kid, you wouldn't want to eat junk food every day, would you? But in order to know what we should eat or listen to in this example, it's very important to know what quality in music actually is. And this is a very hard one because even specialists got used to saying, yeah, there are so many, you know, so many details, most of it is subjective, they say. You like this, I like that. Let's agree to disagree and let the market decide about quality. Well, this is obviously a wrong strategy, but there is indeed something subjective on top of it. And this is beautiful because two people listening to the same piece of music will hear every time something slightly different every time they listen to it. This is wonderful. But underneath there's a more objective and more important layer which can be scientifically analyzed, measured, and passed on by human traditions. So if you take these two layers, subjective and objective, put them together, then you have roughly the overall quality of a piece of music. Unfortunately, in the second half of the 20th century, we let this overall quality of music go down quite rapidly. And unfortunately, it left a world where we have billions of people being surrounded day in and day out by low quality music. And by the way, low quality is not genre specific. There's great and bad pop music as well as great and bad classical music. And with this overall downfall of quality, we unfortunately also influenced the conscious and subconscious music understanding and sensitivity of billions of people today. And this is something we urgently need to fix. In my opinion, making sure we have high quality music for billions of people is right up there in terms of importance with all the other SDGs. In fact, it falls directly into SDG number three, good health and well-being, and SDG number four, quality education. So we know now that music influences our body and that quality music does it better. But why is it relevant in a world full of tech? Well, as most of you know, we are at crossroads currently, and the technology that leads us into the future, while in-depth only understood by very few people, 
is being used by billions of people and it has it or it has us already halfway through through in the singularity and or at least in a world where it's very hard to distinguish human and machine a few examples imagine ai composing your personal music without you ever learning anything about composition imagine an ai doing your law work without you being a lawyer or imagine an ai system healing you without you visiting a doctor or the obvious one imagine a world where you can just google something by thinking as most of you know we are almost already in that world and it will take only a few steps until we are completely in some of us will go there voluntary some of us involuntary and for music this means we have to ask ourselves questions like what is quality i touched upon that who will be the judge of quality an ai my mood my informed or uninformed opinion and how are we giving billions of people the needed sensitivity back to become consciously aware of these quality differences? You know, the ones that our bodies take in anyway, whether you know or not. In my opinion, it's very important to think about these questions and to dream up solutions around them. Because what has happened in the past was actually quite the opposite. We made sure that humans become less sensitive, that we create art with less meaningful differences, with less shades, with ne less musicality, less naturalness. In other words, we made sure that we humans become a bit less human and a bit more machine. At the same time, computers, AI and technology rapidly increase its, its capabilities. And at this low quality music level, machines almost don't need us anymore. They are just scaling by themselves very fast. So if you have this human curve going down, making us a bit less human, a bit more machine, and you have the technology curve going up rapidly, you clearly see the problem we are facing. But don't get me wrong. Technology is a huge opportunity. And I believe it can be used to make good change and to propel this good thing and help us on our path. In fact, I believe we must get that right because this human fine-tuning and musical quality is a layer that isn't used much or not at all in that transformation. And it leaves a world where basically only sellability and scalability decides about quality of things. And I wouldn't want my kid to grow up in a world where junk food would get the label of best quality food ever. What we should be focusing on is making us more sensitive, making us more humane in a way, and creating art and music with more subtle differences, naturalness, musicality, and teach technology to help us on that path. It's a hand-in-hand -hand process. In music, as in many other subjects, the most important questions of this century will be around ethics, quality, and value. Fortunately, there are startups like Paulina Wunders and mine that try to tackle in music exactly these things. And as you know, technology is getting so much better so quickly that frankly speaking, there isn't an awful lot of time left for us humans to become better at being human. I'm very optimistic though, and especially as a musician, because I believe for all of us, this quality music factor can play a key role in that transformation. But I'm also very optimistic for the youth because music education and quality music gives you all these neuronal connections, this value understanding and sensibility that makes kids and adults more sensitive to the world around them. In addition, music education makes kids almost every better at everything they do, from finance, engineering, maths to coding. Therefore, in my opinion, it's an absolute must that music gets again the same importance in normal schools as other main subjects. It's a globally added value. And it's high time that we take STEM, science, technology, engineering and math, and make STEAM out of it. Science, technology, engineering, arts and math.
So if you're a curious young person or an adult with kids, I invite you dearly to open your mind and become conscious of this musical awareness. I promise you it's going to be the best present you will ever do to yourself or to your kids. Far, far in the future, when humans or whatever creatures will look back at our times and will ask questions like, did they find the human place in a world full of AI? Or were they flushed away by the avalanche of data because we were unable to collaborate and use tech the right way? It cannot be repeated often enough. It's amongst the most important things to deal with quality, value and ethics questions in supposedly subjective fields. And also try to improve as humans and not only the machines. I believe we can leverage the power of quality music to make us smarter, more sensitive, more empathetic, happier and healthier. And at the end of the day, isn't that all we want? Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much. Katowice, Poland, it was a huge pleasure. Thank you very much. What a performance and what a speech. Uh, Ingol Wunder, thank you for being with us in Katowice. Ladies and gentlemen, the opening ceremony of the annual Internet Forum, Governments Forum, is nearing its end. Uh, the IGF 2021 in Katowice has started. I uh, wish you a very, very successful and fruitful debate. And remember that uh, this is an open debate about the future of the Internet. Everyone can influence. Feel free to comment, to share your opinion. Thank you, all dear guests and participants here in Katowice, in the International Congress Center, and all those who are with us online. Thank you for your attention, for being with us, and have a great time, those who are in Katowice, in Poland. Thank you. Have a good day. <laughs>